Hello and welcome to this webinar delivered by the ISM Trust. The ISM Trust is the Incorporated Society of Musicians sister charity and works to ensure that all music professionals in the UK can reach their full potential. We create pioneering resources to support all those who work in music and seek to challenge, educate and inspire through webinars, seminars, events, printed and digital resources and advice packs. I am Maria Visitiu and I am Member and Events Manager at the ISM. It's my pleasure to be joined by Maria Thomas for today's webinar on how to be a music workshop leader. Before we begin, I have a few points for you. If you experience any technical difficulties, such as sound quality issues, please let us know in the chat box and we'll attempt to resolve the issue. If you wish to use them, subtitles are available by adjusting the setting on your webinar at the bottom of your screen. This webinar is being recorded and will be available to view on the ISM Trust's website at ismtrust.org forward slash webinars, as well as, uh, sorry, as well as on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, please put them in the questions box throughout the, the presentation and we will endeavour to answer as many of them as possible at the end. Now, without further ado, I will hand over to Maria for the presentation and I hope you enjoy. Thank you very much, Maria. Hello, everyone. I'm just going to share my screen. I've got a few um, uh, PowerPoint slides just to keep give us a bit of structure. So um, as Maria said, my name is Maria Thomas. Um, I'm the artistic director um, of the Music Workshop Company, uh, which was founded in 2002. And we do interactive workshops uh, around the country, largely with schools, but we also work with community groups and do team building as well. So today's webinar is a follow on from the guide that I, I wrote with the ISM earlier this year. So I'm just going to go through a few uh, points. Uh, as Maria said, put any questions in, in the Q&A and, and we'll pick those up. So the first kind of question to answer really is what is a music workshop? Um, when you do them all the time, it's quite interesting to stop and think about what, what, what am I talking about here? So the way I would define it is it's an interactive music session. So that might be kind of a performance based, but getting the people in the room to engage. That might be through singing, through body percussion or a, a full on African drumming session or composition session where there's much more interaction. Tends to be a one off or a short series of workshops as opposed to teaching. So in teaching, you get to see the same students regularly. Um, and so you can kind of build on the, on the knowledge in each session, whether that's instrumental or, or classroom based, for example. Um, whereas workshops tend to be you see people for it might just be a sort of 45, 50 minute session if you're seeing lots of classes in a day or it might be um, a whole day workshop, um, but just a one off or maybe one or two workshops. And as I mentioned, it can be a range of settings. So um, we've run workshops in schools, in nurseries, in fields as part of festivals, uh, in shopping centres, in all kinds of different uh, settings. So it, um, it's quite interesting, the, the range of, of work that's available um, in, in the music workshop sector. So why, why would you become a music workshop leader? I think um, an opportunity to develop new skills is, is always important, um, but in, particularly in the current uh, climate, it can be an additional source of income. And one of the great things about it is it, it is flexible work. As I say, it's not teaching where you'll be committing to, um, to every single week, for example. Um, if you've got a, a free day, um, you might make that available um, to, to potential clients. So the flexibility of it, I think, is, is a real bonus for musicians you know, who have a portfolio career. So do consider it if this isn't something that you've thought about in the past. So a, a number of people ask me kind of, well, how do you become um, a music workshop leader? And, and there are lots of routes uh, into this sector. So um, I was at, I was kind of introduced to, to the concept of workshop leading when I did my degree um, at Trinity College of Music, as it, as it was then, and we had workshop skills as, as one of our modules. Um, so there, there are training opportunities, and in, in the guide we highlight a few of them. So for example, um, the Wigmore Hall do a fantastic animateur facilitator course, um, which then gives you opportunities to, um, to gain experience um, as well as the training. 
Um, so you can go down the formal route, but like many um, pathways in, in music industry, some of it is kind of self-taught or uh, gaining experience through, um, through doing, essentially. So there might be opportunities to develop your skills and there's support um, in a range of different ways. Um, so um, sound sense um, and sound connections run, run workshops, for example, um, with great speakers. And there's some great um, groups on social media as well, where you can engage with other people and share um, it, um, advice and, and ask questions. Um, and then kind of, uh, so thinking about how you develop your skills is a key part. Um, so with the Music Workshop Company, we, we have a database of musicians who are experienced workshop leaders. Um, and so do, do talk to me if, you, if you're interested in joining our database, but we're not, we're not currently in a position to offer training. So we're only recruiting people who have some experience. But like any uh, aspect of music, CPD is really important. So it's not just kind of you do the course and that's it. It's about continually developing your skills, whether that's moving into new genres, working with different types of people um, and just gaining experience. The music workshop community are quite a sharing community and people are happy to kind of pass on top tips and, and activities that you might want to consider. And then there's of course there's the getting work part of it and, and that's essentially why I set up the music workshop originally because I, I knew that teachers wanted uh, quality music workshops, uh, didn't always know quite what they wanted uh, and I knew loads of amazing musicians who were offering workshops and we kind of set up as a bridge because talking to schools is quite a a specific thing to do. I have a, a, a lot of family and friends who are school teachers, so I feel very comfortable talking to teachers and and, and, uh, and kind of finding out what it is that they're looking for in a project. Um, but I, am, you know, I project that that can be quite daunting if, you, if you're not used to talking to schools. Um, again, talking to a, a, a company for team building is a very different experience in terms of what they're looking for, even the language that's that's used. So in the guide, we've tried to outline um, kind of how you might promote yourself. So uh, having a website, utilizing social media, for example, reaching out to um, local groups to you, whether that's local schools, community groups, care homes, um, and kind of uh, promoting your work there. You might want to work on your own or you might want to work in partnership with other people. Um, so there is lots of work out there and, and right now schools are crying out for, for, for workshops we're, we're getting huge numbers of inquiries right now as schools try to get young people back into the classroom engaged um, socializing and of course music is a great way to get young people kind of being social working together um, for kind of team building and also creativity so now is a great time to become a music workshop leader there is a lot of work out there um Approaching schools kind of as a cold call can be quite a challenge. Teachers are, are, are very busy, um, as, as we know. And, and so finding time to kind of do follow up returning calls can be a bit of a challenge. So um, be sensitive if, if when you are talking to, to teachers and, and finding the right person to, to speak to in a school can be difficult. Um, and finding, you know, I find arranging a time to speak to a teacher is, is much uh, a better approach than, than sort of randomly trying to call because music teachers are quite often uh, not just in the classroom but running choirs and orchestras um, and other activities before school in lunchtime and after school so um, that can be a bit of a challenge once you get the work thinking about um, how you define what the project actually is um, is really, really important to finding out what the, what the customers, what the clients want out of the experience um, and then working with them to firm up a proposal and a contract are, are really important points. Just going to pick up a chat point here. Lovely. Thank you. Mary. So thinking about kind of the skills that you need as a workshop leader, um, first of all, kind of musical skills, but I think um, what's important is to define kind of who you are as, as a workshop leader so you might be a specialist you might be someone for example uh, who's a composer who wants to work with gcse and a level um, students who have a, a you know an understanding of instrumentation and harmony harmony and melody and, and lyric writing so you can kind of add a, additional value to their educational experience 
So you might have something that is a very, very kind of narrow view that that's, you're a very specialist in terms of the age of participants or abilities of participants, or in terms of the type of music that you do. Alternatively, you might be a generalist, so you might be happy working in a range of different genres and in a range of, of different settings. Um, I would certainly put myself as in the generalist um, group, I tend to work with um, primary aged and then over 18s. I do work in secondary sometimes, um, but I will lead workshops on composition, African drumming, um, uh, um, kind of classical music. I'm an oboist, um, so we do a little introduction to the orchestra workshop, um, body percussion, junk percussion, um, introduction to music, which will include singing and chanting as well as percussion. So I'm very much in the generalist camp, but we work with a number of amazing musicians who are very specialist. So uh, it's about kind of identifying what works for you. Communication skills are really important. Um, you have only a few moments to kind of get each group on, on board and on side. Um, so thinking about how you communicate is really important and remembering it's not just the words you use, it's how you say it, how you present yourself. Um, and quite often kind of the level of energy that you bring into the room as well. Um, and when we're talking about communication skills, we're talking about how you communicate both with the organizer, who's kind of your first audience, as it were, and then also the people that you're engaging with, the participants. And sometimes they want something slightly different. So identifying how you can communicate clearly with them is really important. And there's also the element of project management, both kind of within the workshop time, but in the lead up to and follow up um, from, from that. Um, and most musicians, you know, are very good at juggling um, different aspects of their careers and, and, and different roles. So the project management skills are vital in terms of um, being quite good at admin, as I say, you know, things like contracts, confirming the details with, with the school. Um, in, the, in the guide, we've put a whole load of questions that we've learned through kind of trial and error of what you need to ask. So for example, if you're turning up with lots of equipment, can you have a parking space really near the door? Can you have help unloading? Those kinds of things are much easier to get firmed up beforehand. Um, and sometimes clients seem a, a little surprised, you know, if we're doing an African drumming um, workshop and we turn up with, with 30 djembes, um, they sort of look at the car and go, oh, that, that's quite a lot of drums. And you think, well, yes, we've got 30 young people and they all need a drum. Um, so, you know, do ask for, for help with unloading and things like that. Do be specific about the kind of space you need as well. Um, so um, for most schools, they still have one or more school halls, but if it, they only have one school hall, that might also be um, a, needed for lunchtime. So scheduling the day so that you can vacate the hall for the necessary amount of time uh, is important. Um, so kind of the, the, the project management, the lead up to actually arriving is really important in terms of timetable and practicalities. But then project management is also quite important within the workshop setting. So depending on how long the workshop is, um, so if it's like a short 40, 45 minutes or a whole day, thinking about how you're breaking that up into different activities. So typically we would start with some kind of warm up activity to get people engaged, get people into the mindset of, of doing something creative, something musical together. Um, we'll then kind of introduce the instruments or the concepts that are being developed uh, during the session. And then we always end with a mini performance that, that might not be to an audience, but just so that the participants can kind of see how far they've come in that, that time. And that's relevant whether you're working with nursery, year six, year 11, or, or team building, for example. Um, having that kind of celebratory performance element at the end is important. But within that, having some flexibilities, um, you know, being able to respond to the participants. So some participants will be very happy for you to kind of not explain what's happening and just go with the flow. Other uh, participants, particularly potentially on, on the autistic spectrum, will want a little bit of structure and want to know what's happening next. So again, talking to the client beforehand to find out what the needs of, of the, the um, participants are is, is really key to make your life easier and to make sure that everyone has a great experience. So a few top tips on, on uh, running uh, workshops. Um, talking to the client, which I've kind of um, highlighted. I think sometimes it's a challenge um, if people have had an experience of a workshop in the past 
but they're not necessarily able to articulate exactly what it is that they're wanting. Um, and sometimes you go in and you deliver exactly what they've asked for and they go, oh, that, that wasn't actually what I wanted because they weren't able to articulate it. Or sometimes they don't have any experience of, of workshops. They don't know what to expect or what to ask for. So talking to the client beforehand um, can just try iron out any of those challenges so that you know what, what's expected and they know um, what to expect. Sometimes workshops are quite free, so we do a lot of work, particularly in things like arts week or off curriculum days, where the, the, the main focus is just for the participants to have some fun, to learn a new skill, have an, a, a, a different experience. But also we'll work with GCSE, A-level, BTEC students who are working to a, a specific outcome, so a composition or understanding a particular genre of music. Um, so again, understanding what the expectations are is, is really important. Preparation is, is vital as well. Um, uh, workshop leading is, although you need sort of elements of teaching and elements of performance, I would say workshop leading is, is, is sort of an entity within itself. Um, and so preparation is really important. Um, again, that kind of project management of, of the logistics, so um, school traffic around, yeah, traffic around schools at, at um, the beginning of the day can be a nightmare, so you can be virtually at the school and then get stuck. Um, so making sure you leave plenty of time to arrive and, and, and unpack, for example. Um, and then planning the session, as say, is, is really important, knowing sort of the beginning, middle, end, how it's going to structure, how you're going to um, deliver that. And if you're not used to doing workshops uh, or um, then thinking through how are you going to break down the activity. So, for example, if you're doing some uh, if you're doing singing, thinking about how you introduce the words, how you introduce the melody. So um, I do a lot of kind of copying. So when I do this, it's me. When I do this, it's you. And we'll learn the words first line by line. Then we put two lines together uh, and then we learn each line with the melody and um, and if you're not used to kind of breaking it down, that can be a bit of a challenge. So making sure that you, you've practiced, and just like a performance, you've practiced, you know exactly how you're going to present this information. The other element of preparation, I would suggest, is preparing more than you think you're going to need. Um, different groups take to different activities uh, in different ways. So sometimes you'll have an activity that is, has traditionally taking you kind of 10 minutes with, with, with a group and then you might do it with another group and they only take five minutes. And then suddenly you've got an extra five minutes to find uh, of activities to find for that, that group. So always have kind of additional um, activities sort of up your sleeve um, that you know kind of will work in a variety of settings. Um, I think that's that as a key part of the preparation is, is what have you got in your back pocket that the activities that you can just throw in um, if something's gone quickly, but also if something, if a group doesn't take to a particular activity, how you can like transition into something else um, and have that in mind. And almost kind of paradoxically, I'm saying be fully prepared, but be very flexible. Um, it might be flexible, it might be being adaptable um, or responsive, I think is, is a key word here. So you know, we're, we're as musicians, we're, we're taught to perform, we're taught to kind of interact with the room. So picking up on, on signs within the room, you know, whether activity is going particularly well, whether something perhaps you need to change slightly for this particular group of students, uh, that might depend on the age, it might depend on the ability, it might have an impact in terms of special educational needs. Um, so thinking about how you're going to react if you have some young people who are uh, disrupting the class, whether that's kind of uh, a behavioural issue or, or something that's sort of out of their control, thinking about how you're going to adapt to that and how can you be flexible to kind of go around that. And, um, you know, prepare for the unexpected. You might turn up and they'll say, oh, actually, well, you were going to be in this room, but now we've put you somewhere else. So, again, logistics, there might be changes. They might change the timetable at the last minute. Um, I was at a school in the summer. Uh, it was arts week. Um, I had two whole days of singing workshops with this school uh, and I got a message on the. So I was doing Monday and Tuesday on the Friday. I got a message to say year ones won't be in because they're uh, they're self they're isolating. And then on Saturday, we got a message saying, 
oh, the year fours won't be in because they're isolating. And then Sunday, oh, the year sixes won't be. Um, so that's kind of fine. And as it was, I just had a gap in my schedule there. But it might have been that as if, if I'd just been working with some of the classes and something happened like like classes isolating that the tutor says that the teacher says, or could you do something here instead? So kind of being flexible um, there. And linked to that, I think, again, is you don't have to be too flexible. So knowing what your strengths and weaknesses are. So if someone asks you to do something that isn't a strength of yours or that you've not done before, kind of feeling confident enough to go, uh, I don't have experience of that. However, I could do this and moving it into an area where you do feel much more uh, comfortable. So flexibility kind of against the preparation, I think, is, is quite important. So that's all I've got in terms of content. I mean, I could talk about this for hours. I'm <laughs> very, very passionate about this, but I just wanted to open up to any questions that we've got coming through. If not, I'll, I'll kind of talk about some other areas. But Maria, do we have any questions coming through? Um, not necessarily. I mean, I, I kind of prepared some questions, but if anyone uh, watching does have any questions, please um, let us know. Um, oh, we've just received one. Um, do you have a price for a, a workshop? And that kind of links with something I was going to ask on how do you decide on fees for workshops? So um, it's that's an interesting one. I think so different organisers will, will um, do different pricing. So whole day workshops are usually priced between kind of 200 and 450, something like that, uh, depending on the amount of equipment, travel costs, and those kinds of things. Um, whether you're going direct to the school or whether you're going through an organisation uh, such as my organisation. Um, so, I we tend to do half day, which is up to three hours morning and afternoon or a full school day um, because it takes a lot of preparation even to just do a, a one hour workshop. So it, it seems more um, efficient in terms of resources to have that half day or whole day, um, because if you just do a one hour, that quite often means that you have to cancel other or you're not available for other work. So um, I would say think about the amount of time in the school, but also the amount of time in terms of preparation thinking about travel um, and then whether you're supplying any equipment as well. Yes. Um, perfect. Thank you very much. Our next question is, I was wondering if there are any kind of particular common topics for workshops that are requested by schools? Um, there's a real mix. Um, and sometimes people contact us and say, this is what I want. And it's really, really very specific. And others kind of go, we've got arts week what can you give us you know it it, it really does depend on, on the school um at the moment um we're getting quite a lot of inquiries for um things like african drumming and samba and that kind of team element mm. of things uh, but composition and songwriting is always very um uh, always very popular as well um and singing, um, singing kind of <laughs> wasn't quite as popular during COVID, but it seems to be coming coming back again. So it really is a, a wide range of, of what's, you know, of what's of interest. Thank you. Um, do you have any good links to resources that would be helpful with warm up and games and everything like that? Ooh, um... I'm not sure. I think most of the things that I've got, I've either got through books or through um, uh, working with other people and say so we're quite a sharing bunch, really. And a lot of my a lot of my activities have, have been um, developed from things that other people have told me. Um, I'd say in terms of. Uh, hmm. I know of good places like SoundSense who run great workshops for kind of developing, but I'm, um, I will have a think about resources and, uh, and feedback on that one. Thank you. Um, also, any suggestions on the best way to, to publicise workshops for schools or advertising workshops in schools and stuff like that? Yeah, um, there are lots of companies that will include you in their mailings. Obviously, there's a cost to that. 
Um, but there are lots of companies that specialise in, in, in marketing to schools. Um, so they will include your flyer in, in, a, in a post out or um, they'll include an advert on their webs on, a, on an email that goes into a school. Um, so you can kind of pay for marketing in that way. Um, approaching schools directly can work. Um, we get most of our clients either through word of mouth or from uh, from Google, essentially, because on our contact form we ask where people found us. Um, and so for us, it's it's about um, having the right search engine optimization so people are finding us on on social media uh, on on uh, web finding our website on our social media. So um, so you can pay and go in that route. Um, there's also opportunities like the Music Education Expo, for example, where you can get a stand or do a workshop there as a taster session. Um, and there are other similar um, conferences that are more broadly focused on education rather than the specialist music and drama expo. Um, so yeah, a few, few ideas. Thank you. Um, similarly, how do you approach companies? So um, any corporate? Um, so again you can do a direct uh, approach so if you were going to kind of care homes that sort of thing um you could go a direct if you're looking to do team building um you can either go via an event company so we've got a few event companies that we work with um so we're kind of on their books as it were to do workshops if you're applying directly to the company uh, to a company or contacting them if you're looking at team building try and find out who the relevant person is in hr um, but again, there are kind of conferences targeted at event managers and, and um, conference suppliers. They tend to be more expensive to have a stand or promote at because the thinking is that you earn more money working with companies, so they'll charge you more for the marketing opportunities. Mm -hmm. Of course. Okay. Um, there is mainly this is mainly sorry that was the question. If this is mainly specific to school workshops. What popular workshops would you recommend for adult community creeps, and what do choirs usually ask for? Oh, okay. Um, so with community groups, um, a real mix again. Things like um, uh, well percussion, African drumming, those kinds of things. Um, with choirs and kind of amateur orchestras and uh, community instrumental based groups um, we've worked with them where they want to develop a, a specific skill so it might be to focus on breathing it might be ensemble um, it might be introducing them to some new repertoire for example um, so it's a real mix in terms of kind of workshops um we've worked with choirs who've kind of gone on away days and so you go and you're part of their away day or away weekend um so it's yeah it's we, we don't do a huge amount of that um but where we have it's as I say it's been things like mostly focusing on on ensemble mm -hmm. um and and we tend to try and get them away from their instruments or voices for a while get them out of their comfort zone to get them doing things like body percussion or take along some instruments for them um, to kind of move away from just focusing on voice or their particular instrument um, to develop kind of um, ensemble skills and listening skills and other communication skills. So even if it's it's a choir, it's quite good to do something away from the voice as well to develop broader musicianship. Sure, of course. Thank you. Um, what would you suggest for someone who's interested in getting started in leading workshops? Is there any training that you'd recommend that they could take? Um, there are some great courses. Um, there is a section in, in, in the guide on this, but there's um, there are kind of training courses such as with the Wigmore Hall. Um, and then there's kind of one off sort of CPD sessions that are run by organisations like SoundSense, which is the umbrella group for um, community musicians. They do some amazing um, talks um, and sometimes some of the conservatoires also run short short courses in these kind of skills or postgraduate qualifications as well um, but it does i think you know schools aren't always and, and other clients aren't always looking for professional qualifications so going along and you know contacting a workshop leader and saying can i come along uh, and, and learning on the job, I think, is, is a really great way to develop your skills. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Um, 
I think we had one more. Do you think schools tend to respond positively to an independent workshop leader contacting them directly with a proposal for a music workshop? I think that's that's all about timing, really. Um, it's teachers are really busy, um, and so um, catching them at the moment when they know they've got budget and they're looking for you know they're, they're in the middle of planning is quite difficult to judge. Um, we've had a lot of inquiries at quite short notice this uh, this term. We tend to ask for six weeks notice to make sure we get the right musicians in for the job, but we've had a number of inquiries coming in at kind of two weeks notice. Um, some of which we've been able to accommodate and some some not, particularly in October, which is Black History Month where it always gets very busy. So sometimes it's about knowing the calendar. So in the lead up to Black History Month, quite often schools are very interested in, in workshops. Um, and then in the summer when schools are kind of post exams, they quite often have arts events, arts weeks, cultural weeks, off curriculum days. Um, and, and so I think if you can, if you can time it right, um, I think that's good. And if you can develop, you know, as with any marketing, you're trying to develop a link between you and, and the customer. So if you've got a link to the school, then that help, you know, if you were a student there or, or, you, or you've taught there in the past, as a as a an instrumental teacher, for example, that can really help. Um, but I don't think there's any kind of magic thing that we can do to get in front of, of, of uh, teachers. In, in the early years, we did send out brochures, um, but it's yeah, it's. I think there's an element of luck there. You know, being very clear in terms of what you're offering, but then it, there's an element of luck as to whether that's something that's going to chime with a particular teacher, and that's what they're looking for at that moment. So again, I think it's about making sure that people can find you when they're looking for something. So having a great website or a social media presence would, would help. Mm -hmm. Sure, of course. Thank you. Um, I think that's, that's all in terms of questions so far. Was there anything else that you wanted to, to cover? Um, well, I think, you know, um, it's it. If this is something you haven't looked at as, as, as a pathway, then I think it's certainly worth considering there's, there's a lot of work um, coming up in this area and it is flexible. So you do have, you know, you can decide whether which days you want to kind of go off and do workshops and it's a one off. So you don't have to worry about getting a dip or turning down other work. Um, it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, it also gives you flexibility in terms of what you want to deliver. So again, you know, if you're, if you're a, a peripatetic teacher, you're, you know, following a, a curriculum, you're following, you're preparing students for exams. This does give you a lot more freedom in terms of how you how you deliver and, and that element of whether you want to be a specialist or a generalist, um, I think is, is great as well. Um, so you do have a lot of kind of power in that relationship in terms of what you want, what you want to deliver and how you want to, to deliver it. And say so it's just the the schools are crying out for this at the moment i think other community groups are kind of opening up to to um to workshops as well businesses are looking for team building you know as people come back to the office uh, get used to being in the same room again um and so that's both small businesses and large businesses are looking for little activities on away days for example that uh, will help bring them together and, and music is a great way great way to do that um do you have any um, kind of tips and tricks on how you deal with, you know, difficult students or people that don't really want to get involved and particularly in corporate situations, I can imagine people not really wanting to get involved? Yeah, I think some of it is is um, not letting the participants know that not getting involved is an option. Mm. It, so it's like, we're all here to do this. Like, there is no option of... <laughs> you can opt out it's like no no we're, we're all doing this um i think if if you're in an adult situation and whether that's community group or, or team building and you've got someone who doesn't want to get engaged i think you just have to kind of step away and leave them to it um i think in the classroom you need to utilize the teacher experience mm -hmm. um, because you might only be working with the group for a very short amount of time it's quite difficult to get to know all the children's names or any uh, particular needs so that's where you need to rely on the teachers um I've had very mixed experience of teachers and again this is the preparation the lead up to be specific that you expect teachers to engage with the workshop 
um, some teachers, you know, they're so pressed for time. If they think, oh, I've got, I've got 40 minutes, I can just catch up on some work, sit in the back of the room, uh, they, they will take that opportunity. But it's really great for the students to have perhaps, you know, the, the, the teacher or the teaching assistant engaging with the workshop and it does help classroom management um, uh, as well because they can then pick up on, and they know the children, they know whether someone's just getting a little bit overexcited by, by this experience, which happens, or whether it, someone is trying to be a bit disruptive and a bit, you know, spoil it for others. Um, so it, it can be, it can be a, a difficult um, situation, but I think generally, um people can be won over you know you mm -hmm. just say you don't kind of say to them I, a couple of times i've been in schools and teachers have sort of said oh you don't have to join in if you don't want to and i'm like Please don't say that. you know the whole point is that we're all here together um and and so that kind of feeds into that that setting the tone when you arrive uh, or when when you greet each group of this is what we're going to do and we're all going to work together and this is the outcome um and you learn classroom management tips kind of as you go. So if you've got a group that are being very disruptive and not uh, listening properly, then there's a, a great technique where you just stop talking. And particularly if you stop in the middle of a sentence, they, if they're not, even if they're not quite paying attention, there's that, that moment where they go, hang on, something's changed. Um, and, uh, and that kind of gets people's um, attention back. Um, but I would say, you know, it's very rare that we encounter people who don't, who are not going to join in. And sometimes people, you can see they're a bit grudgingly joining in. Um, I did a team building uh, activity on kind of creativity and performance skills and people sort of shuffling in going, no, oh, I'm not a musician. I don't know what I'm doing here kind of thing. Um, and we did, again, percussion instruments and, uh, and we were, they were creating their own piece and every group moved from, from, from just using percussion to singing and dancing, which was completely like they decided to do that and they all went out kind of singing and dancing. Um, so although you do occasionally get people that are not not engaging quite often, peer pressure can kind of bring them in. Uh, and, and it's such a fun activity that they, they can't they can't stay unhappy for a while. Yeah. Sure, of course, yeah. Um... Are, are some workshops easier to, to to lead to handle than others or I think yes this might be personal preference yeah I think it is uh, I mean, people sort of say to me well, what's the worst ones to do and um, it, it really does depend um, uh, I've got colleagues you know I say oh I'm going to do a nursery workshop and they're like that's just like the worst one. <laughs> scenario or oh, the ones that I absolutely love doing is when we would do something like um, a shopping center so we just turn up with loads of instruments normally at least two musicians would be there and we just see what happens uh, and you get toddlers joining in and you get teenagers coming to have a go on the drums and and I just absolutely love those days and some of my musicians are like no because there's no structure there's no structure what you yeah what, what's the experience there and it's just fantastic you know you get you end up having like three generations of a family all joining in playing together I think and I absolutely love that but say so I know some of my colleagues just that would be their worst nightmare <laughs> so I think it is very dependent and again that's something you learn by by doing um and and again I know you know as musicians and, and freelancers we hate saying no to work but kind of going that's that's not really what I do and then if you've got a list of other people, the amount of people where if they've asked for something that we don't offer and we've gone, well, this is where you might be able to find the information. So sometimes we get asked for like weekly sessions, which that's not how we work. And you say, well, if you go to, you, have you tried your local music hub or your local cultural education partnership, for example, they'll come back and go, oh, no, brilliant, brilliant. And thank you for that. And then they'll come back at a later date and then ask for the workshop. So, you know, it, it's about signposting people um, and then they just appreciate the help. So, yeah, I think I think what is easy is uh, very um, subjective. Sure, of course. Well, thank you very much. Um, we don't seem to be getting any questions, so I think we're, we're heading towards the end. So thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you for for brilliant presentation. Thank um, you. As I said... Sorry, Sorry, I'll just go ahead. Go say, ahead. Um, do do uh, contact me if you've got any questions or you want to arrange a chat. We are actively recruiting musicians at the moment, so if you have a bit of experience, do get in touch. We've, we've got work uh, coming in, so we'd love to talk to you. Thanks, Maria.
Sounds great. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, uh, there's a link to, to Maria's guide in, in the chat. So if you are an ISM member, you can access that free. Um, our next webinar uh, will be on the 1st of December with Paul Harris on unconditional teaching. So you can find a link to that on our website, which is ism.org um, forward slash webinars. You'll find all the information there. If you are interested in ISM membership, it's open to all UK music professionals and offers legal advice and representation, comprehensive insurance and specialist services. Um, thank you again for attending. I hope you enjoyed um, it. As Maria said, if you do have any questions, you can contact us. Our email address is membership at ism.org or you have Maria's email address on, on the slide in front of you. Um, so lastly, thank you again and we hope to see you at another ISM Trust webinar soon. Hope you have a lovely rest of your afternoon and a lovely weekend. Thank you.